It's a 190 North all about the color purple. We hit the red carpet for the opening gala, hang with the show's hometown stars, and we get the inside scoop on the story straight from the author, Alice Walker. 190 North is now. and welcome to an all new 190 North. I'm Janet Davies. It's a best-selling book and director Steven Spielberg made it a blockbuster movie. I'm talking about The Color Purple. And now it's been turned into a soaring Broadway musical. And direct from New York, The Color Purple has made its way to Chicago. Here's Lou Canellis with more on the star-studded red carpet opening event. Broadway comes to town and Chicago rolls out the red carpet for The Color Purple. The Pulitzer Prize winning book by Alice Walker comes to life on the stage of the Cadillac Palace Theater. And while Wicked is flying into its second smash year just down the street, The Color Purple is the latest effort to bring Broadway in Chicago for extended runs. When we look at the success of Wicked, there's no question that it, to, uh, to a large degree, has put Chicago on the map. The color of the carpet may be red, but the color tonight is purple. The color purple, the hit musical that's getting standing ovations on Broadway in New York City, is coming to town. And with a special Chicago tie-in, that's right, one of the producers of the color purple, Chicago's very own Oprah Winfrey. Now I'm hoping to get to see Oprah. <laughs> You're hoping to get to see her here as she crosses yes, the red carpet, right? Yes. How lucky are you that you have tickets for opening night? Oh man, I went online early. So I've been sitting with my tickets with my wife for about a month. The glamorous premiere brought out Chicago institution Roger Ebert and his wife Chaz. This is terrific. And I mean, what do you say about this evening? Thumbs up, yeah. Chicago has such a rich history of music and art and culture and shows and of course Oprah's put together a, a first class production. It's starting to look more and more like Broadway in downtown Chicago. I think it is and, and you see that continually more and more longer runs are staying here longer and also the, 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 the artists love it. They really enjoy Chicago. Pop singer and songwriter Brenda Russell comes decked out in the color of the evening. She spent five years writing the music and lyrics to The Color Purple, an effort she says was challenging. Um, it was pretty difficult because um, it's, it's different than writing pop songs, which is what most of us do. You have to tell a story through music. Ten minutes before showtime, the night's most anticipated guest finally arrives in front of the theater. What does it mean to you to have opening night here in your town? It's like uh, coming home, coming home. Oprah created the role of feisty Sophia in the film version, a role now played on stage by Chicago native Felicia P. Fields. Felicia Fields, a Chicagoan, playing the part of Felicia's Sophia. Home. What advice have you given her? Oh, I have no advice for her. She's the one giving me advice. Are you kidding? <laughs> for Felicia to be able to perform in front of her own family or friends or community, you grew up here in the theater here, this is really her night. Wow, the theater is packed here, sold out. All that's left now is to get the reaction from the sold out crowd on the Tony Award winning show. Someone asked me earlier today, what was this my dream? I said, I didn't even dream this. This is God's dream for me. This show was just wonderful. Just an amazing, amazing story. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. It's kind of like a church experience. I thought it was really good, and the songs were really powerful. If you have a chance, please get out and see this show. It is awesome. It is the best. Thank you, Lou. Now, it's been 25 years since Alice Walker released her book, The Color Purple. I recently had the opportunity to sit down with her to learn more about her classic story of love, hope, and triumph. The Color Purple was published in 1982. 
It told the story of Celie, a black woman in the South who wrote letters to God in which she tells about her difficult life. Its author, Alice Walker, was born the eighth child of Georgia sharecroppers. After a childhood accident blinded her in one eye, she went on to become valedictorian of her local school and attend Spelman College and Sarah Lawrence College on scholarships, graduating in 1965. After school, she became a political activist and writer. In the early 1980s, her life changed, and this story was created. I had left New York. I had divorced my husband. I had given up my job at Ms. Magazine, where I was an editor. So I moved to a little town called Booneville, and you couldn't get much more boony than that. And that's where I wrote it, and it was wonderful. I spent my days swimming in the river. Uh, I had a wonderful new lover, which was great help to my creativity. And it was just, it was just ecstatic. The novel won a Pulitzer Prize for fiction in 1983. In 1985, director Steven Spielberg put this story on the big screen, starring Whoopi Goldberg, Danny Glover, and a young talk show host from Chicago who reminded Walker of her own mother. When I showed the photograph of my mother to Spielberg and Quincy, uh, and then Quincy later saw Oprah, he made that recognition, and that was really delightful. I didn't even realize that she was a powerful celebrity even then in Chicago, but I learned that from my daughter. She said to me, Mama, do you realize Oprah is a huge star that people just follow her on the street? And I said, no, I had no idea at all. Producer Scott Sanders felt The Color Purple would make a great musical. People thought he was crazy. But after eight years of convincing, he had his dream on stage. Alice was resistant at first, and she said, I don't know. I've." I wrote the book, it was a movie, maybe we should leave well enough alone. And I said, no, there's just, it's going to be another way to tell the story. Scott Sanders, who was the lead producer, uh, was very persistent. He took me to New York, he took me on a cruise around Manhattan with a lot of theater people. I liked them all, and I liked him. And so that was the deciding factor, that he was a very decent person with a good heart. A million people told me you can't do this, and but that's, you know, but some of the greatest things in the world are when people tell you you can't do it, and, and then you do. I love the musical. It's truly wonderful. It has so much wit, which I think the, the movie lacked. Uh, the movie didn't quite understand that these people suffer a lot, but they have honed their humor to a fine point, and so they're actually funny. So I wanted that to, to be present in the play, in the musical, and it is. What makes The Color Purple such an audience favorite are Alice Walker's vivid and unforgettable characters. As a matter of fact, a couple of the stars in the musical are area locals. So stay tuned, because up next, Luke and Ellis gets a glimpse into the life of Rockford native and Destiny's child diva, Michelle Williams. And later, Michelle Allegria hangs out with Blue Island's very own Broadway superstar, Felicia P. Fields. Welcome back to a 190 North, all about the color purple. Okay, she's graced the covers of magazines, performed all around the world, and lives a life of fortune and fame. I'm talking about Michelle Williams of Destiny's Child. And these days... She's spending her nights in Chicago, fulfilling her dream on stage in The Color Purple. Lou Canella spent a day with her and gives us an intimate look into her life. Like the lyrics in the award-winning song, Michelle Williams is just that, an independent woman. This Rockford native of Destiny's Child fame is by all means the epitome of a hard-working woman. She has traveled around the globe, performed on prestigious stages, and won several Grammy Awards. Today, this platinum-selling recording artist is back on stage here in Chicago, turning heads as she portrays Shug Avery in the color purple. If you don't know where it is, give her the she do the right. That's why it is. I met up with her at Rocket Bar and Grill here in Chicago for an exclusive look into her life post-Destiny's Child and to see how it feels treading new water. 
You're from Rockford, but Chicago's close enough. How does it feel to be back home? It feels awesome to be doing the color purple here in Chicago. Petite in size, Michelle Williams always dreamed of being a big star. As a child, she sang with her church choir and even performed in a few other groups before Destiny's Child came calling. After her stint with the group, Michelle traded in her microphone for screenplays, hoping to pursue a career in acting. However, her road to stardom was an uphill battle after several movie producers refused to cast her in any films. They didn't care that I came from Destiny's Child. It was very humbling. Trust me, it was very humbling. <laughs> Devastated yet determined, Michelle set out on a mission to master the craft of acting. So with the acting coach in tow, she traded in the glitz and glamour for Acting 101 for a shot at what she describes the opportunity of a lifetime. Great Amy is leaving today and Seeley coming with us. I appreciate what I'm doing now because I worked for it. I mean, I made sure nobody else was going to get this part. And with that determination and will, she embodied the role of Suge Avery and impressed the musical's director. Day in and day out, Michelle Williams has been devoting 100% to Suge Avery. But when I see what's in your heart, all the rest is blurred. However, when the curtain closes, she quickly transforms into a glamour girl. Even if her escape is merely a shopping spree on Rush Street. There's oh. nothing better than to shop on Rush Street. You've got everything you need. Can I get you to put on something for us? And no matter how choreographed <laughs> her life may be, she still finds a minute to hang out and take in all that Chicago has to offer. And although her grueling schedule would give you the impression that she is out of touch with her musical roots, uh-uh, she's also working on another solo album due out by the end of the year. You promise me you love me. Something I dream of doing is, well, being on the big screen. If they present me with the right role, you know, and it's something that I'm in love with, of course I'll do it, absolutely. Acting and singing doesn't stop for me. I want to be able to do it all. For now, Michelle is enjoying the success of The Color Purple because it tells the universal story of perseverance and living life to its fullest. I'm very proud to be part of The Color Purple. It's about victory. It's about everybody in the show persevering through obstacles. Every race, every sex can identify with this story. I think that's what makes me smile. That's what makes me proud. Thanks, Lou. Now, let's hit the town with the toughest lady around. Michelle Alegria finds out that anything goes with the actress playing the brave and spirited Sophia, Broadway superstar, and Chicago's very own Felicia P. Fields. Today, I have the pleasure of following one of my favorite characters in the musical, Felicia Fields, who plays Sophia. Now, since she is a Chicago girl, we thought it would be fun to follow her around the city and check out some of her favorite spots to be when she's not on stage. If you want Southern cooking, good food, hot food, that's where you, that's where you go. Yes, Felicia loves Edna's, the best biscuits on earth. This neighborhood soul food eatery is proudly owned and operated by Ms. Edna Stewart. No, no, no. Mm -mm. I want nasty grits, and cheese. Miss Edna's is so, so good. <laughs> From her favorite restaurant to her favorite project, the Regal Theater, dark since 2003, she and other entertainers have joined forces to start a community theater program to light up the South Side. They're reopening the Regal, and we really want people to know that this is going to be an effort to help the community to bring back a piece of history, as you can see, the artistry in this building is phenomenal, um, and we really, really want to 
make the Regal live again. While at the Regal, we had time for a quick interview with the strong and opinionated Felicia Fields. She was discovered by Bill and Julie Geller at her local church where she was choir director for 20 years. It wasn't long before she auditioned for her first stage production, The Wiz. I went in and sang two gospel songs and when I finished the first one, David Bell was the director and he jumped up and said, where have you been? And the rest is history. She continued to work at the Marriott Lincolnshire and other theaters like Drury Lane, Oak Brook, Apple Tree, and The Goodman. I ran into Gary Griffin though when I was at the Drury Lane, Oak Brook, and uh, he put me in his contract to do uh, It's a Wonderful Life and to play the angel. Honoring her father, she made a career change and gave vocal performance and theater a chance. A little luck and a lot of talent landed her the biggest role of her life. But fame hasn't affected this hometown girl. I put no investment in what you might call notoriety. And when you get to be this age and get discovered after you've been working for 20 years, reality did already set in. The stage has always played an important role in her life, and now her daughter, Abrielle, is following her footsteps. We had these little solo tryouts one day, and when she came up to sing, it was one of those where, you know, you get the little prickles. Are there any similarities in Felicia and Sophia? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Definitely. Like what? <laughs> Everything. What are you guys saying? <laughs> Ease on down the road. Ease on down, ease on down the road. Oh, yeah, yeah. Easing down the road, the afternoon was filled with treats. Sophia promised me the greatest cheesy caramel popcorn in town at her favorite spot. Ranch and white cheddar. Now this is the popcorn that she ships to the Broadway color purple. Okay? So we usually get you know, one of these tins once a month so we can put them in the dressing room and people come in our, into Sophia's room and eat the popcorn. Absolutely the best popcorn in the world! Then it was a quick shopping trip followed by a manicure. It's the people that make Chicago. It was a while back, uh, that Julie wrote a song that says, um, my heart and soul agree there's just no place I'd rather be than with the folks that live in Chicago, my hometown. Chicago is my kind of town, too, and we are glad to have Felicia back supporting the cast of Sophia. All right, stay tuned, because up next, Doug Banks catches up with the men of the color purple. You can take 190 North with you on your video iPod. Just log on to 190north.com for details. Welcome back to 190 North's Color Purple Show. Now, earlier we got to hang out with the Color Purple stars, Michelle Williams and Felicia P. Fields. But here's Doug Banks with more on the rest of the stars in the show and the guys, too. I'm gonna take a deep breath. I'm gonna hold my head up. The Color Purple is a story about women joined by their love for each other, the men who abuse them, and the children they care for. And there certainly wouldn't be a show without Celie. The lead character in this touring production of the musical is played by Jeanette Bayadel, an actress very familiar with the part. She was Celie in the Broadway cast and is now starring in the same role here in Chicago. We're used to the crowd coming to us on Broadway, but now we're taking the show out to the people. And I think, I hope it'll be great. Reality show fans may recognize Celie's sister, Nettie. That's LaToya London, an early frontrunner in the third season of American Idol. She's a fun, you know, loving character, and, um, and that's me. <laughs> I'm going to Memphis, and I'm going to say... And the lovable character Squeak is portrayed by actress Stephanie St. James. I love her, her journey through the story, um, wanting to be a singer, you know, and seeing her go through that and being so supportive of the family. It shows how a community can come together, and Squeak was a major part of that community. 
The Color Purple is a fantastic musical with some incredible female roles. But what about the men in this play? Let's meet them right now. Now, I've never seen the ocean, but I love she. The male lead, Celie's husband, Mr., is played by Rufus Bonds Jr. An actor theater goers in this town may already be familiar with. You see, he was also Mufasa in the Chicago production of The Lion King. But for Rufus, Mr. is the role of a lifetime. Years ago, when I saw the film, I told my wife, I said, when that's a musical, I want to do Mr. So I've always known it was something that I could do. And also to understand what black men went through in that time period mm -hmm. and those generations and to be on stage understanding what it is in, in my real life and to experience it here and to experience it here um, it's just amazing. Veteran television and stage actor and the first African-American to host a game show, Adam Wade is playing the part of Mr.'s father, old Mr. You have three generations of black men who work together. So it's that kind of thing that we do because it's family. I fed the chickens and the chopped the wood. And actor Stu James stars as Mr.'s son, Harpo, a modern-day man who treats women different. Interesting to me, walking down the street, I'll have, uh, <laughs> I'll have people that'll yell and women say, come on, come on over here, Harpo, okay, let me jump, let me pick, can you pick me up? That sort of thing. So to me, I think that's, you know, hilarious. And it lets me know that they really, they really get it. All three gentlemen, let me ask you, what part of, okay, all three gentlemen, and now we're being <laughs> okay. Good. Sorry, I just had to do that. Looking I had good. to do that. No doubt about it, an incredible musical that you need to come and see because these three gentlemen certainly add something to it. But this young lady and I, let's grab some lunch. All right. What are we doing? <laughs> now don't say no. Don't leave us, sure. sure. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm never I'm never sure gonna leave. coming. You pick the place where you want to go. You sure pick the place. Okay. Yeah. Coming to town. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Doug. We'll be back with more 190 North right after this. 190 North is brought to you in part by Broadway in Chicago, providing entertainment into the heart of Chicago's downtown theater district. Well, that's all the time we have for this week's show, all about the Color Purple Musical. If you'd like some more information on anything you've seen, check out our website, 190north.com, or call the hotline number at 312-750-7190. Thanks so much for joining us. We're going to see you again next week for another 190 North.